있습니다. 이렇게 아서민 선생님께 큰 박수 부탁드립니다. 1900년대에 어, 미국에 있어서 가장 큰 제조 회사가 어디였는지 혹시 아시나요? GM, General Motors. No cars in 1900. 아, 1900년. It was piano manufacturing. Piano 제조. Of all the country, the entire country, piano manufacturing. 네, 전 국을 전 국에 걸쳐서 피아노 만드는 게 가장 컸다고 합니다. At that time. 그 당시에 that was the the life of the people was so much more connected with classical music or playing piano, learning piano. It was so much so natural for them. 사람들의 삶이 클래식 음악을 <웃음> 접하고 피아노를 연주하고 그런 것들이 굉장히 자연스럽게 이루어지던 시대였어요. And we move farther and farther from that time, and now. 그러면서 거기서 점점 멀어져서 그 사람들은 이제 작곡가들 너무 옛날에 살았고 이제는 피아노 어떻게 쳐야 될지 잘 모르겠어요. 그런 시대가 들었어요. 그래서 사람들이 알고 싶은데 이걸 어떻게 연주해야 될까? 그래서 선생님한테 가서 이거 어떻게 쳐야 될까요? 하고 선생님한테 결정을 하죠. 물론 선생님은 학생들을 어떻게 그런 스타일에 대해서 연주하는 거 도와주시죠. 그렇지만 지금은 달라졌어요. 왜냐하면 사람들은 그래서 여기에서 좀 끊어지는 그런 상황이 되었습니다. 그래서 연주자들이, 학생들이 연주를 할때 그렇게 마음으로부터 연결된 그런 연주를 하지 않아요. 선생님은 굉장히 많은 피아노 음악을 들으셨는데 Auditions. We just finished our auditions. We have our auditions. Fifteen minutes, fifteen minutes, fifteen minutes. And mostly they play almost the same pieces. Every time it was one ten. 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 It sounds exact, almost exactly the same. But the story is quite similar. If they don't make mistakes or something, it's almost exactly the same. 실수를 하지도 않고 거의 비슷하게 칩니다. And I start to doubt why am I even in this business? What's the purpose of this? 그래서 그런 걸 들으면서 내가 도대체 이 사업에 이 영역에 왜 있는가 그런 의문이 들었다고 하십니다. When you listen to recordings of pianos from, say, 1925, in a way, it seems like people are doing what they're supposed to do. I should make a crescendo. I should slow down. 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 I And and um, I need to feel like that, but also the students should try to feel like that too. 선생님도 그렇게 느껴야 되지만 역시 학생들도 마찬가지입니다. And so the solution to that. 그래서 이런 해결책은 one possible solution. 한 가지 가능한 거는요. Try to find music teachers. 한 가지 가능한 거는요. Try to find music that nobody heard before. 한 가지 가능한 거는요. Try to find music that nobody heard before. <웃음> 사람들이 전에 한 번도 들어본 적 없는 그런 음악을 찾는 거죠. 그리고 많은 사람들이 그렇게 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이건 굉장히 흥미롭지만 그리고 선생이 스스로도 많이 했습니다. 선생님의 삶에 있어서 큰 부분을 찰스 아이브스 콩콜리 소나타 연주하는데 시간을 많이 보내는데요. 많은 사람들이 별로 좋아하지 않아요. 
and I agree the way people use it. But I try to play it in a way that sounds different and that people would like that. But the problem is, okay, if you play a piece like a passionata, that's a great piece, sounds good, everybody likes it, but it's the same thing. If you play the Concord Sonata, it's something new and different, but it's so difficult to understand. So both problems. So another possible solution is to play everything in some weird way. So some people's personality that matches with their personality. And sometimes it works. Like, for example, when Glenn Gould started, he was so different, but actually he was a genius. But in general, that's a bad solution. Because it's not sincere, artificial, it doesn't have anything to do with finding what's in the music. So what I want to do in my teaching and in my playing, I'm trying to find a way so that each person is their, their themselves come out in the music in a natural way, not artificial, not contrived. Because each of us is unique. Each of you, there's never been anyone like you, never exactly like you, and never will be, just unique. And if the music can go through that, like light going through a prism, then it comes out in a unique way. For example, with a young child who's playing some piece, you could ask him, What's your, what's your favorite part of this? If they don't have a favorite part, it's hopeless. <laughs> I mean, they have to, the person has to respond to the music. First. But um, if they have a favorite part, you can say, okay. Play that part, show me why it's your favorite part. And that's what we should always be doing, not only our favorite parts, but all the parts of the music, is finding the beauty in it and showing to people what's so beautiful. And in that case, it doesn't sound the same, because we feel the music a certain way, and we're not doing, okay, I have to do it like that, we're doing it because I love that, and I want to share that. Yeah. So, <웃음> 모든 부분을 이런 식으로 좋아하는 부분만 그렇게 하는 것이 아니라 내가 그 곡의 전체를 그렇게 좋아하게 해서 내가 좋아하는 그 부분이 드러날 수 있도록 연주를 해야 되고요. 나는 유니크한 존재이기 때문에 그래서 그런 식으로 하게 되면 내가 만들어내는 음악을 유니크할 수 있습니다. For example, um, I um, had a student last year playing the Dobbins Bundler. I never played that piece. And I definitely thought it was not a very effective piece for a concert because there's so many slow movements and just strange pieces. But as I was teaching her, I was listening to it, and I realized there's some things about that piece. One of them is that everybody plays the second edition of that piece. And Schumann originally wrote it a certain way. That was his inspiration. And then later, quite a bit later in his life, mostly with his wife, in charge, they changed the piece 
to make it, she thought, especially her class one also felt, wanted to be respectable. 그래서 좀 쇼, 그 클라라 슈만은 남편이 로드 슈만이 좀더 존경받는 좀 작곡가가 되기를 원했습니다. And he was when he originally wrote it, he wasn't trying to be respectful. He was expressing himself. 네, 이거 처음에 오리지널을 작곡을 했을 때는 슈만은 이 곡이 존중받는 곡이 아니면 내가 존경받는 작곡가가 되도록 작곡한 게 아니라 그냥 자신을 표현한 곡이었거든요. So what they changed? 그래서 그들이 바꿨어. 반복에 있어서 부분을 많이. And the same thing with Chrysler-Yana. The second edition. The short, crazy things are all repeated. And the idea seems to be like it's too strange and we have to do it twice so that people can understand it. But the first time Schumann wrote it, it was no repeat. So that was like a hallucination, one thing and another thing so fast. And that's what's great about it. Because it's not just the music itself. It's the music itself. And also, he did some weird things. They changed and made them more normal. But in the case of the Japan, they changed and made them more normal. So with my students, so with my student, working on with my student, we did the first edition. And plus, that student, she's very inspired herself. And she loved them because she felt that the way she played so well. So I decided to play myself. And I'm so excited about that piece that I can show to you. If I were not a good person, but if I play, the feeling I have is I'm going to show you how great this is. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. And also, I think that this is a very important thing. At the beginning of the piece. Now this one change, most people now they use the first edition because it's such a ridiculous thing to change in the second edition. But everything else, people usually use the second edition. What I'm trying to say is that, I mean, most people play the second edition. But most people use the first edition just in the beginning because the change is so ridiculous. 대부분의 사람들이 이제 2판을 가지고 연주를 하지만 시작 부분만큼은 1판을 연주를 한대요. 왜냐하면 그들이 바꿔놓은 게 너무 이상했기 때문에. It starts like this. And did you notice something strange? 뭔가 이상한 거 눈치채셨나요? Anybody notice anything strange? Nothing strange? Didn't anyone think this? It almost sounds like the piano is broken. Right. 마치 피아노가 고장난 것처럼 그렇게 느껴지죠? The B is carried over. 자, 계속 유지가 됩니다. That's very odd. I mean, the, is, the strange thing or crazy thing is that it starts this mazurka and suddenly totally stops. 시작하다 갑자기 없어지죠. Totally different piece all of a sudden. But that little B that's hanging over connects them together. And of course, it's not completely different from the second part. It's not completely different from the second part. Because the beginning is based on that. The beginning is based on that. The beginning is based on that. It's really actually the same thing. But actually, it's the same thing. 
완전 같은 테마예요. 같은 주제로. 두 번째 에디션에서는 이 B 부분을 없애버렸어요. 그 유지된 B. 여기 이렇게 의미 없는 게 사실은 좀 어떤 면에서는 더 일반적이고 좀 전상적인 느낌이 들긴 하죠. So little things like that. 네, 이런 작은 것들이 are eccentric eccentricities or little things like that are things that make people different from one another. There is something strange about everybody. You know, people don't shouldn't be try to fit into some kind of normal mold. That's what they were doing when they changed the edition to the second edition, make more normal. But it's not normal. And the things that are so interesting are the things about each person. Each one of you has something a little bit strange, I'm sure. Those are the interesting things. And those are things that we should be proud of to play, not try to hide them and make everything sound the same. 사실 모든 사람들은 각자 다 이상한 구성을 한 것을 좀 가지고는 있죠. 그래서 이런 곡들도 이런 작은 것들이 사실은 조금 이상하기는 하지만 이게 이 곡의 캐릭터를 만들어주는 거고 이런 것을 감추려고 하는 게 아니라 자랑스럽게 드러낼 수 있어야 합니다. 근데 두 번째 에디션에서는 이런 거를 좀더 정상적인 방식으로 정상적이라고 하지만 어떻게 보면 그런 캐릭터를 잃어버리는 방식으로 바꿔버렸죠. Each piece is like an individual person. 마치 개개인 사람처럼 그렇습니다. So piece, 우리가 곡을 연주할 때는요. Instead of looking for the style, which is a general sound like that. 이런 식으로 소리가 나야 된다라는 이런 거. Better to take the one piece, like Opus 109, And what is this piece saying? Just this piece. Like there's nothing else existing, but just this piece, the personality of that piece. 네, 저그 주변에 뭐 베토벤의 후기 소나타의 스타일 이런 거 전혀 이런 거다 없애버리고요. 그냥 원어나인이라고 한다면 백구감이죠. 삼십번 소나타는 그냥 그거 자체가 어떤 개인을 드러내보듯이 그렇게 곡을 보셔야 합니다. Everything we play has to tell the story. 이야기를 해야 합니다. Sometimes the story is very obvious. 굉장히 확실하게 그 이야기를 드러나기도 해요. For example, Brahms D minor ballad. D minor ballad. Ballad number one. Ballad 일 번에서. He wrote that it's about a poem by a particular person. 여기 어떤 사람에 대한 특별한 사람에 대한 시를 써놨어요. So we know the story. 그래서 그 스토리를 확실하게 알게 되죠. Our other pieces on, for example, Carnival of Chumans. 칠만의 칸인 것 같은데도 역시 each each name. 각각의 이름들 사람들이 알고 있는 그 의미를 알고 있는 이름들을 써놨죠. But other pieces are very abstract. Like the Bach fugue. 좀 그렇게 확실하지 않은 것들이 있어요. 예를 들면 Bach의 fugue 같은 것들. But even the Bach fugue. 그렇지만 Bach의 fugue에서조차도. When we play it, we need to be as if we're telling the story. Now this happens. Um, sometimes the story, if the pianist has an idea, nobody's going to know what it, the story is. But it doesn't matter. Because if the pianist believes their story and they're trying to say this, then the feeling of meaning comes across to the audience. The general feeling that this means something that grabs the audience. 그래서 거기서 나오는 그런 이런 이야기 그 뜻이 정확하게 뭔지 모르겠지만 그 이야기들이 관중들을 사로잡게됩니다 I have a very clear idea for myself of the Schumann David's story. Because there's a poem by this British poet, Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas. And that's my favorite poem. And it's about. It's about. It's about. It's about. It's about how this beautiful childhood. He's describing this beautiful childhood in such a glorious way. But then he says. Time doesn't tell us how few days we have like that. 
The idea is that you know we don't know when we're a child, but just a few days and it's going to be gone. The s o i s is that we are a l l w a y s w i t h a e e t h e s o i n g t h a e e a s e o n a e e e e o a e e e e o i a e e 굉장히 그 아름다운 게 그거에 내가 그 순간에 있을 때는 그 시절이 그 시간이 얼마나 짧은지 또 지나가 버릴 것인지를 깨닫지 못한다 그런 의미입니다. If a child reads that poem, they won't understand. 음, 만약 어린이들은 그런 그 시를 전혀 이해하지 못하겠죠. But um, in the David's book, learn. 그렇지만 다비지 분들로에서는 there's a theme at the beginning. 첫 시작에 주제가 있고요. And then. 그리고 나서 마지막에 좀 복잡해지니까 이 모든 이야기를 다 얘기할 수는 없지만 But, um, it's like, it's far later in the piece. 이 곡이 좀 뒷부분에 가서 시원해서 굉장히 멀리서 거리, 먼 거리에서 들려오듯이 그좀 슬픈, 슬픈 시작의 주제가 나타납니다. 마치 기억 폐상하는 것처럼 나타나죠. So 그리고 그거 그렇기 때문에 굉장히 슬퍼요. 왜냐하면 거리 때문이기 만은 아니고 또 그게 굉장히 옛날이었기 때문에 슬픈 겁니다. So anyway, of course, she didn't think that because the poem, the poem wasn't written yet. 네. <웃음> <웃음> 아, 확실히 쇼마는 그렇게 표현한 건 아니에요. 왜냐하면 그 시가 아직 쓰여지지 않았기 때문입니다. 근데 선생님이 그 곡을 연주할 때는 이게 생각을 가지게 되는데 선생님은 이 아이디어를 가지고 연주를 하기 때문이죠. 때때로는 분석적일 수도 있고요. 예를 한번 들어보겠습니다. 우리 많이 연주하는요. 언어 나이는 아까 3 0퍼센다요 정확하게 문제는 어떤 종류의 일반적인 음악적인 제스처가 있어요. 사람들은 모든 걸 넣으려고 하죠. 여기에 펜스통이 있는데 그래서 거기에 익스프레스리티 표현력 있게 이렇게 하면 그러면 페인트에다가 고객가 그런 식으로 그림을 그리듯이 표현을 합니다. For example, to start something slow. 뭔가 느리는 데서 시작을 하고 그리고 점점 빨라지는 대로 이거 알아봤습니다. So we do a little bit on everything. Every phrase. 근데 이게 아름다워서 우리는 모든 프레이즈를 조금 느리게 시작을 빨라지고 이런 식으로. Even it has nothing to do with actually what's going on in the music. 그래서 음악에서 실제로 그렇게 움직이지 않는데도 불구하고 그게 예쁘다 아름답다는 생각 때문에 그렇게 연주하는 경향 있기도 해요. So with 109. 에서 I would say almost 100% of the time. 거의 100%의 시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작시작
<웃음> 어떻게 보면 얘기하기 좀 성숙하지 못한 표현일 수도 있겠지만요. Really 선생님은 그 음이 아름답게 나기를 바랍니다. So that piece it starts very innocent, naive. It starts very innocent, naive. So, when Beethoven was a child, he liked to improvise on the piano. We actually know this because his neighbors, they wrote some letters, the fishers lived next door, and they said this little boy who was always dirty, and, and not um, <laughs> care of it. He <laughs> liked to do it. And his father would come home and stop him from doing that and make him practice scales. I would love to hear child Beethoven improvisation. 
네, 선생님은 그 어린 베토벤이 체크 연주하는 거를 듣는 걸 굉장히 좋아합니다. But I'm imagining that this is his improvisation. 여기서 이게 바로 체크 연주라고 생각해요. 어린 베토벤. Because your hand is like that. You can get over it. So, anyway, but still, it's beautiful after his father. And then, okay, the next. 그 다음 부분은요. 이 곡을 알고 있습니다. It's an example of trying to understand the music, not the deep analysis, but just look at it and see what story the music tells. It's not a story like the Beethoven Child, but it's a story of the music is doing this and then it does this, and I'm going to explain. 네, 이 곡을 어떻게 막 분석을 열심히 해야 되는 그런 곡이 아니라 음악이 이야기하는 걸 열심히 들여다보면 방금 이렇게 베토벤 이야기를 선생님이 하셨던 것처럼. 시, 시대가 아니에요. 선생님의 상상입니다. 그런 식으로 음악 자체가 무엇이, 무엇인가를 이야기하는 그런 대표적인 작품이라고 생각하십니다. So this part, usually when I hear this in auditions, 들을 때, 오디션에서 들을 때, for some reason everyone plays it really slowly. 굉장히 느리게 치는 경우도 있어요. It usually sounds like this. 이런 식으로 들려요. And there are three measures. The three measures. The phrase. Three measures of phrase. Three. Then second measure is this one. And then the third measure is this one. So this is really the second theme of the piece. It's beautiful. This is the main theme. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I feel like that, those five notes, is the heart of the piece. And then that repeats. It doesn't seem like a repeat, but that one is the same as this. So you have three measures. And have three corresponding measures. And if you can show the, the beats and the measure, and feel that, it's really beautiful and it makes sense more than usual. So So that is two different kind of examples of having it in the 
music mm -hmm. is one of them is a story, mm -hmm. and the other one is actually what's going on in the music. And those are the kind of things that I would like students to be thinking about in every page. Not just to learn the notes and learn the dynamics, but look behind it and find what's underneath the music. Mm -hmm. 그래서 이두 가지 곡들 하나 아까 다른 친구들로 그 다음에 두 명은 아니죠 이게 서로 다른 스타일을 보여주는 아주 대표적인 예를 들었습니다 하나는 다른 친구들은 스토리를 이야기를 이야기하는 곡이고요 그 다음에 어, 이 원어나이 같은 경우 음악 자체가 보여주는 건데 선생님이 원하시는 거는 학생들이 그런 악보에 여기 어, 볼트 있고 여기 크레신도도 있고 라인하면 그 쓰여져 있으니까 그냥 그대로 연주하고 음이 이거니까 그대로 연주하는 것이 아니라 여기에서 이런 이야기들을 아주 표현을 했으면 하는 것이 선생님의 바람입니다. 그리고 그게 모든 페이지에서 일어나게 된다고 합니다. Now I want to take a little bit of a side path about this talking. That I want to talk in general about faithful to the score. 악보에 좀 충실한 거에 대해서 좀 이야기를 해보도록 하겠습니다. That's been like morality. 이런 도덕성 같은 거예요. That's such a great thing to be faithful to the score. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best possible thing to do. That person is so faithful to the score is the best that is perpetuated, that, that is continued by piano teachers because you know sometimes it's easier to teach like that or if you, you don't know the piece and and you don't know what to say about it, you say, well, it says to do this and just follow this and do this, do everything in the score. So this idea is just so ingrained in, in people that they have to do. So that's actually the piano teachers 아이디어들이 스며들었는데요. 그게 오히려 어떻게 보면은 악보를 가르치는 게 훨씬 쉬운 방법이었어요. 왜냐하면 내가 이 곡을 잘 모른다고 할지라도 악보에 이렇게 쓰여졌으면 잘 여기 이렇게 쓰여졌을까 이런 식으로 해 그러면서 점점 이렇게 자라나게 됐죠. 네, 악보를 따라하면 안 된다라고 얘기한 거 절대 아닙니다. 그렇지만 여러분들이 하는 거는 어, 무엇인가를 할때 항상 여러분의 태도가 중요합니다. If you're afraid, or if you just have a general like rule, I always have to follow the score. So, I, I think that's bad. But if you can understand why you have to follow the score most of the time, but there's a reason not to follow it in other times, and there's a certain flexibility. And the whole, it's not a. The goal is not to just like how well I can present exactly what's in the score, but that's not a good goal. It's a different kind of attitude. You need to make the music come alive. 네, 악보에 있는 써 있는 그대로를 절대 지키지 말라는 건 절대 그 얘기는 아니지만요. 그냥 그렇지만 쓰여져 있기 때문에 내가 지키는 것이 아니라 내가 그 음악을 이해하고 그거를 생명력 있게 표현해 낼수 있도록 하는 것이 필요합니다. I'll give you a few examples. 예를 몇 가지 예를 들어 주시면 될까요? Why the score is a little bit of a flex. 악보를 그래서 악보를 연주할 때 조금 유연성 있게 하셔야 되는데 왜 유연성 있어야 되는지 얘기한 예를 좀 드려드리겠습니다. True performance practice to be true is to do the opposite thing. Yeah, oh, genuine performance practice is the time of the dance. But genuine dance is when the performer is doing the opposite. The opposite. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah, the opposite. Other things are, for example, Brahms. 
um, his own copy of his B flat concerto. B flat concerto is a lot of markings of changing tempo, slow down, get faster. Tempo 계속 바꾸는 그런 마킹을 했어요. But he didn't want to be published. 근데 그게 출판되기도 원치 않았습니다. He said that if the pianist um, doesn't know how to do that by himself, then it's not going to be any good. And if he tries to do exactly what he wrote, then it's not going to work either. So he just didn't want to do that. 피아니스트가 그거를 전혀 안다 알지 못하면 그냥 뭐 나름 연주를 하겠지만 그걸 그대로 다 쫓아서 연주를 한다는 것도 왜 그렇게 어, 그게 잘 어울리는 효과적인 게 아니라고 생각을 하기 때문에 결론적으로는 그거를 근데 출판되기를 하지 않도록 했습니다. And there are so many times when musicologists they think they know exactly how something was supposed to go, and then we find out later it was all wrong. 뮤지컬자들이 뭔가를 발견했어요. 이건 이런 식으로 가야 된다. 근데 거의 대부분 나중에 밝혀지는 사실에 의하면 그거는 잘못된 것인 경우들이 있습니다. 예를 들면 dotted rhythms. 그래서 붙점 같은 거예요. In Bach. 아크 음악에서 C minor partita. C minor partita인데요. But that's not how people play it now. That's how when I was a student, people play it. That's exactly what it says in the score. Yeah, 학생은 선생님이 학생 시절은 이렇게 연주하셨대요. 왜냐하면 이게 악보에 그려져 있는 그대로거든요. But then people realize that Bach did not write. Specifically, how he wanted rhythms to be dotted. He just wrote the easiest way, and he left it up to the performer to to, to dot. So it's not exactly half double dotting, or it's just the performer had to have the feeling for it. So Bach is exactly, very specific, very precise. The points of the line were not written down. It was just Bach's most simple way of writing. The performers had to understand it according to their own feeling. 했거든요. 그래서 그 리듬을 정확하게 뭐 격부점이다 이런 것도 이렇게 얘기할 수도 없습니다. So now the um, people generally play like. 그래서 이제는 사람들이 이런 식으로 연주해요. They generally do that, but if you notice, I did one of them. 그런데 여러분 뒤지는 줄 모르겠는데. Stick with the old way for one note. But if you are playing with a teacher, you can play with only one note. You can play with only one note. So when we listen to auditions, if a student comes to play C minor part, and they play the way it's written, they don't play the way it's written. We know that it's not a very sophisticated teacher. 예, 그러면 아 이거 이 학생을 가르치는 선생님은 그렇게 지적인 선생님이 아니구나 이런 생각을 하게 됩니다. But when I was a student, 근데 선생님이 학생이었을 때 그때는 모든 사람들이 이렇게 연주했었어요. So my, I talked with my own teacher about that, and he said he still likes the old way because that's what he's used to. 그래서 선생님한테 선생님이 선생님한테 말씀을 드렸대요. 그랬더니 그분은 옛날 방식으로 좋아했다고 그냥 그거에 너무 익숙해있기 때문에 말씀하셨습니다. 그게 아주 굉장히 많은 예 중에 하나입니다. 그래서 작곡가들이 우리에게 정말 진정으로 원한 것이 무엇인지 알 수는 없고요. 그래서 우리는 그걸 연주할 때 그런 상식적인 것들을 적용해서 해석을 해야 됩니다. 또 다른 예는요, 장식음이에요. 장식음은요, 사람들이 이걸 어떤 식으로 연주해야 되는지. 그래서 학생들이 항상 선생님한테 오죠. 이 장식음 어떻게 연주해야 돼요? Of course, that's a good question. It's a good question. But there's not one way. 그렇지만 그 오간 그 장식음을 연주하는 유일한 방법은 아니에요. 선생님한테 물어보는 게. I believe that the whole reason for ornaments is to have freedom to do various different things. I don't believe that Bach 
the people in Bach's time played exactly the same ornaments all the time, or the way he wrote them. And even the same ornament sign could mean something different. The reason I think that is because the experts now are all disagreeing about so many ornaments. 지금 현재의 전문가들이 그렇게 많은 장식품들에 대해서 별로 동의하지 않고 있기 때문에 그렇습니다. Even a simple one like this. 예를 들어 가장 간단한 이런 곡에서 쓰시고요. This ornament. 이 장식품. 이런 건데요. 네 개가 맞춰볼게요. 왜 우리는 네 개로 해야 될까요? 여기 라인이 가운데 있는 게. 그 반대로 동기 안 될까? And the reason I mention that is because Paul Vidura Skoda, a famous scholar, he wrote a book, The Keyboard Music of Bach, and he argues that it should only be three notes. 네, 선생님이 이거를 지금 언급하는 이유는요. 폴 마드라스코다라는 사람이 바로크 시대 건반음 악기를 어떻게 연주를 해야 되는지에 대해서 책을 썼는데 그 책에 이거를 따라라 하고 세 개만 써야 된다고 연주를 해야 된다고 써놨대요. That would be sounds better to me. 네, 선생님한테는 이게 더 듣기는 좋은데. I started to feel like the way people play with four notes is like cockroaches all climbing around in the music, and then they don't belong there. Oh, so I think that when I was four years old, I used to play baccarat. I used to play baccarat, and there was a lot of music that I used to play. But I'm not sure. I mean, I don't mind if my students play with four notes or three notes. It doesn't matter. The important thing is to find a way. That you think it's beautiful, and nobody is going to really be able to tell you that's wrong because they don't know. And it has to, you have to have a sense of the style, a natural feeling, common sense, really. And I mean, some things would be wrong. It would be wrong to play. Some that's wrong, but I mean, we just have to use our common sense. 네, <웃음> 길어지면 제가 자고 잊어버리는데요. 어... And I'll give another example. I 아, love 선생님의 this. 학생들이 세 개를 치던 네 개를 치던 선생님 전혀 상관이 없대요. 그냥 다만 학생, 그리고 학생들도 친다. 그래서 어느 누구도 너 잘못됐다라고 얘기를 할수 없습니다. 왜냐면 그들도 정확하게 먹지 모르기 때문에. 단지 그게 아름다운 거를 느끼고 그 감각 있게 치면 되는데요. 그렇지만 그렇다고 해서 잘못된 게 없는 건 아니에요. 방금 선생님 친 것처럼 도라도 라고 치는 건 확실히 잘못된 겁니다. 
왜냐면 학생들이 충분히 이렇게 들여다보지 않는 경우들이 있는데요. For example, in, in Chopin, Chopin, sometimes he marks certain kind of pedalings. 선생님이 어떤 아, 쇼팽은 어떤 부분에는 페달을 넣는데 They don't work on a modern piano sometimes. 근데 때때로 어떤 현대 피아노에서는 그 페달이 또 제대로 잘 효과가 없을 때도 있어요. But you should always try. 근데 여러분들은 항상 그걸 시도는 해봐야 됩니다. And then decide. 그리고 결정하시면 돼요. And if you don't do Chopin's pedalings, you don't feel guilty. You just make it sound the way you think it should sound. 그래서 쇼팽에 적은 그 페달을 그대로 지키지 않는다 그래서 죄의식을 가질 필요는 없고요. 여러분 생각이 이게 옳다고 생각하는 방식으로 가시면 됩니다. Now here's a case in Beethoven. 베토벤의 경우입니다. Where the markings are really important. 마킹이 베토벤의 경우는 그 마킹 해놓은 게 굉장히 중요해요. Actually in Beethoven I find that they're always important to follow markings. 음, 선생님이 발견한 거는 베토벤의 경우는 모든 마킹을 열심히 따라야 합니다. So that when there's no slur, it means really that it shouldn't be legato. And then in these two measures, there's a slur and a crescendo. And then again, no slur. And then a slur. And if you don't do that, then that part is kind of meaningless, just repeating, 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 and that's what not what he had in mind. 그래서 만약에 학생들이 이런 걸 지키지 않는다고 한다면 이거는 그냥 반복하는 것밖에 안 되는데 의미가 없어집니다. So I'm saying all opposite things. 모든 반대의 것들을 이야기하고 있어요 지금. Sometimes follow the scores. 때때로는 악어를 그대로 해야 한다. 때때로 때때로 그 말이 아니야. 근데 그게 선생님이 강조하고자 하는 점이. To have the overlooking the freedom to to make your choice, not because you want to be some special individual person, but just because that's what you think is the right thing, but it's not not locked into something. Yeah. 어떤 거에 고정관념을 가지고 여기 이렇게 쓰여져 있기 때문에 내가 한다라는 것이 아니라 내가 이것을 선택할 수 있는 자유를 가지고 그걸 아름답게 표현하는 게 중요하다고 생각합니다. One more um, element of that. Um, 네, 여기서 또한 가지 요소 이야기해야 될 건요. There's a really problematic issue. 네, 굉장히 문제가 있는 부분인데. Um, is when there's a dotted rhythm. 붙잡이 있을 때요. The eighth note with a dot. 8번의 표, 전파번의 표, 16번의 표 이렇게 있을 때. And then the other voice at the same time. 또 다른 선구가. 근데 다른 선구는 세개 다른 표현 갖고 있습니다. So it's written. Yeah, I learned it like that. 선생님은 어린 시절에 이런 식으로 배우셨대요, 바흐. But now we realize that with Bach. 근데 이제는 사람들이 알게 됐죠. They go together. 같이 연결했어요. So. That means that sixteen notes are not six notes. Then, okay, people now everyone knows that. Although there is a problem, there's a problem. That's a big problem. How to actually solve that? But anyway, that's a big problem. So in Bach, the triplets. The Bach's second note is the most important note. But there are other notes too. Like Schubert. For example, Schubert. And there are so many places in Schubert where you have a dot rhythm in the middle. And should they go together or not? Should they go together or not? And I think most of the time they should go together. 
So there's a, a place in the C minor sonata. Um, I tell them, you know, some people think you should do this, some people think you should do that, you have to decide. I don't, I don't, I don't care things like that. That's not important, that's not what I'm trying to teach. In general. And other, um, other cases, what about Schopenhauer? It's actually true in Chopin too. Because of um, the Polonaise fantasy. Polonaise fantasy. Those are triplets with the thumb. In the top, it's the same octave. And it has the 16th note. So if you try to play the way it's written, obviously that's not right. And so, and there are a lot of places in that piece in other pieces of Chopin where you have to decide. There are a lot of things, like that. the individual performer has to decide the score is not going to tell you. And if you go to your teacher to just find an answer to that, that's not good. 대답을 듣기 위해서 해답을 찾기 위해서 선생님한테 갔다는 것도 올바른 방식이 아닙니다. I think the teacher's job is to tell somebody the options, possibilities, and then to tell them if it sounds wrong. If it sounds wrong, 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 if it sounds in a beautiful way, they think it's beautiful to inspire the students. Or it's also good to listen to recordings. 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 Or it's Sometimes I lose my inspiration. But then every time, every time I go and use YouTube, you can read the same thing. Every time, but then every time, if I go on YouTube and read the same thing, it's amazing. 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 Or even if I try to do something similar to the way they do it, it doesn't sound the same. It's not copying. It's learning, and so I think it's good inspiration. So, 선생님이 거기서 나와서 어 이거 좋다 생각하는 걸 그대로 이렇게 쳐보기는 하는데요. 때때로는 그대로 친다고 쳐봤는데 거기서 나오는 소리가 전혀 다를 때가 있어요. 그럴 때는 카피가 아니게 되겠죠. 그런 식으로 다양한 방식으로 영감을 받고 있습니다. The bad thing about listening to recordings. 레코딩을 들을 때안 좋은 점이요. Number one, they all sound. The modern recordings are so perfect. Modern recordings are so perfect. People are only concerned with being perfect, and it makes it hard to feel like a musician. Of course, it's good if it's perfect, but perfect is not the only thing. But that's not the only thing. And yeah, I was going to say something else. Oh yeah, okay. Is to choose some little thing and try to copy it. 네, 그래서 뭔가 좀 작은 것들을 찾아서 그거를 카피하려고 노력을 해보는 건데요. 그게 나쁜 거죠. Like a student will play something. 학생들이 뭔가를 치는데 뭔가 이상하게 치고 있는 거예요. So I say that doesn't sound. 야, 이거는 좀 맞지 않은 것 같아라고 하면. Like Ashkenazi does. Ashkenazi가 이렇게 쳤어요. 그런 이야기하는 거죠. I'm sure I didn't exactly do it like that. And even if you did, it's part of the whole performance. It's not just one little thing. Yeah, 그러니까 전체적인 퍼포먼스를 하는 게 아니라 어떤 연주의 어느 부분만 이렇게 하는 거는 맞지 않는다는 뜻입니다.
So I want a, a couple of more examples of, of things in the music to look for that are specific to that piece. Make that piece special. 그 작품을 특별하게 만드는 정도입니다. I love this Mozart sonata. 선생님 모차르트 282번을 좋아하시는데요. It starts every Mozart sonata starts on a tonic chord. So the E flat, but here, but here, it's a trick. It's not the tonic chord. This is four of B flat, and actually the beginning is in E flat. So it starts. Here, it starts. It's like um, Beethoven's G major. Beethoven's G major. C major, right? It's C major. So it started in one key and ends in another one. The Brahms It starts with an E flat chord. It's supposed to, but it's not really E flat. 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 It's not Thank you. 
이 브라운스는 슈만이 할수 없었던 그래서 예를 들면 남이지 분들과는 첫 번째 굉장히 좀 이상하다 그랬잖아요. 근데 할수 없었던 그런 노멀한 방식, 정상적인 방식으로 슈만 브라운스는 그 모든 걸 작업을 할수 있었던 겁니다. 이게 굉장히 비극적인 얘기죠. 그리고 슈만은요 굉장히 처참했습니다. 그리고 브라운스는요 거기에 죄책감을 느꼈겠죠. And so this guilt is what he's expressing. That's why he chose this poem. So if you have all this idea of what you're going to do, and you have to punch more emotion. And the fourth ballad is really one of the most beautiful pieces of it. There's no story. Really. But a ballad is a story, so of course when you play a ballad, you have to feel like you're telling a story. 그래서 여러분 발라드 연주할 때 이야기를 하듯이 연주하셔야 돼요. 발라드 자체 원래 시에서 나왔어요. 이야기를 하듯이. 
いとしておけばいいんだけど、あなたの気持ちを下からちょっと、それがそう、出るからそう。
I, I really um, think that in the past, as I started this lecture talking about 1900, 예, 이 애초에 시작할 때 1900년대 기준으로 선생님 그 당시 1900년 초기에는 굉장히 모든 연주들이 살아 있었습니다. 그렇지만 그렇지만 그 소리가 레코딩에서 늘 듣기가 좋았던 건 아니에요. 어떤 이유로는요 아마 그 음향 때문일 수도 있고요. 그렇지만 때때로 많은 경우에 어떤 피아니스트는 뭔가 표현이 굉장히 개성적인 거를 너무 강하게 표현했기 때문에 사실 선생님도 좋아하는 건 아니에요. 그리고 또 틀린 음도 많았고요. 그렇지만 여전히 거기에서 굉장히 많은 뭔가 있습니다. 이런 멘토들에서 선생님은 선생님 학생들이 이런 레코딩들을 듣기를 원해요. 뭐 유자왕이 연주하는 거 그런 것만 듣지 말고요. 한 선생님이 호텔에서 유자왕을 어제 들었을 때 선생님 항상 고민하시는데 내가 지금 베토벤 소나타 원어스 한 번만 내 소나타를 쳐야 될지 말아야 될지 그걸 주무시라. 그래서 유정이 치는 걸 어제 들으셨는데 굉장히 어메이징한 게 치고 있습니다. 그렇지만 잘 모르겠어요. 여기에 소울, 그 의미 이런 것들이 없는 것 같아요. 거기에서 그 속에서 끌어오르는 뭔가가 없습니다. 뭔가 좀 스퍼피셜하다는 거 가식적인 그냥 겉 수박 겉핥기 같은 그런 느낌인 거죠. So anyway, I'm because I was thinking that because 그래서 선생님이 그걸 생각을 한 이유가 I got the idea speaking with my Advisor who is my former student here. I really want to come back next year. I really enjoyed this trip here. I enjoyed playing recitals. So I want to organize another recital for next year. But it turned out that yesterday was the deadline for submitting a program to try to get a hall. So I had to do that last night. That's why I just did it. So I decided to play this all Chopin program. And the teacher said, "Oh, all the Chopin program." And the one piece I wanted to start with is this. The first piece I wanted to start with is this. 선생님은 이 완주가 항상 어렵다고 생각합니다. 지금 연주를 할수 없어요. 왜냐하면 이걸 해결 못했어요. 내가 지금 만드는 선생님 만드는 그 소리가 별로 마음에 안 드십니다. 그래서 선생님 생각에 1년 만에 아마 이런보다 더 걸리면 그래서 휴그 하마클라비어가 사악장의 휴그거든요. 그거 치는 것보다는 훨씬 잘칠수 있지 않을까. 선생님이 듣고 싶은데요. 유튜브를 보시고요. 루벤스타인을 한번 들어보겠습니다. 이거 아마 잘 들리지 않을 수도 있어요. 그렇지만 이거 한번. You should go and listen to it online when you have a chance. 여러분이 기회가 있다면 온라인 들어가서 직접 한번 들어보세요. He is um okay, good idea. And he's in his home. 집에서 연주했는데요. And and what I want, if you can hear it from there. 이거를 들을 때. The subtleties, the the naturalness that he has. But it's so it seems pretty simple. But if actually you listen to it. 
여러분들이 붙일 때 the rhythm is very nice. 리듬이 굉장히 그냥 그냥 가는 게 아니라 빨랐다 느렸다. But he captures the, the essence of it. 근데 이거의 에센스를 이렇게 찾아서 그렇게 연주하는 걸볼수 있습니다. And so I feel there's no way to copy that. 그래서 이거를 카피하는 게 불가능하다고 생각합니다. But it's inspiring. 굉장히 영감을 주고 있죠.
before the bar. It looks like it's too early. 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 It's too early.
잠잠 3시간에 